the opportunity to work with a unique guy, a really fun guy. Uh, Jason's 48 years old, 5'7", 165, and a beginner at 48, only he's played the last year or two. And watch the stride here and watch how he lunges into it. There's, it's almost like you're doing a dumbbell uh, lunge squat with it. And then the upper body, there's just a long chase and a long loopy draggy swing. Something that starting this late in life, uh, you want to play some competitive ball with your friends and teammates. We're going to have to really get to work and work on the team and work on some specific drills. Again, not a bad load and stride, but again, there's a rollover. When you drive your hands, there's not much drive ahead. They kind of follow the rotation and you just roll over. Really, he couldn't hit a ball very square at all. He had a 48 mile an hour average exit speed simply because your base mechanics weren't good and you hadn't played much since a little bit of Little League when you were a kid. And if you look at here again, the knob goes down, there's a rollover. Almost like you just don't have much of an idea what to do, and that's why you were here. That's why you traveled all the way here. Watch one of the top pros, Andrew Collins. Look at weights on the back leg, hands come back into the hips, rotate and drive open, and he drives and extends his uh, his arms. His hands lead the swing. Watch his hips. Brace legs down. He drives the hip open against the front leg, and there's a sharp rotation and torque against the hips. If you watch his hands here, now he starts in a little bit of a odd position, but he gets right back to the connected position, and watch, he drives his hands forward, really creating a lag and a snap. Watch here. The hands are driven outside the rotation towards the inside and the bottom half of the ball, and when the top hand drives past the bottom along with the wrist towards you get a snap. See there, look at how the hands are driven no higher than the bottom of the ball, and when he starts to snap, that's right where the bad head's going to snap to. Snaps created by the snap of the wrist, but really the top I'm driving by. So day one, we had to really get the hips working better. And see how you just twist it on the back foot? You aren't using a linear interrotational force. We want to lower on the rear leg and keep the weight there and then drive forward against and toward the wrist, or the hips rather. That's a lot better job. Bat on the hip drill with the palm up, palm up, because you're going to push and extend the top arm, palm up. Much better on, on the first day already. And then when we went to the second day, look at here, look how much better that is. You're getting a rotational drive of the rear hip, and both hips are torquing together against the brace leg, getting a sharp hip rotation. That's what we need to work on and get enough muscle memory to do. Now, when we went to the upper body, that was really a, a big flaw. Watch how you're just dragging around. There's no lag and snap. There's no drive of the knob forward like this. No drive of the hands and the knob forward outside the rotation. That's a pure linear move, even though, even though it's inside the rotation. And then, you know, you're going to get a lag and snap. Watch here. The lead arm is really passive and slow, and you just kind of snap past it. The hands have to drive much faster, much harder, much quicker. It's a short, compact stab, we call it. Now, watch, watch his hands. Look how short that stab is. Rotate and stab and drive the hands forward. If you want to hit something hard, you'll lead with the hands. You'll drive with the hands, and then you'll snap. That's a little bit better, but look how far you carry over here. And look how long that stab is. Right there, the stab is real short and fast. The stab or drive of the hands or drive of the knob. You see Greg Connell here. Watch his hips. He's coming ahead and then really look at the sharp drive of the rear hip and then the torque of the front leg back. The hips are torquing against one another. But really, it's not just a passive torque. It's a drive from the back side. If you watch his upper body here now, hands come back to the connected position. And that all that power of the hips, that rotational drive forward into the brace leg, drives the hands forward. See, they're driving outside the rotation towards the ball. And the hands lead. The knob actually leads initially, then the hands lead. And following the top hand drives past the bottom hand, you'll develop a snap. But it has to be in that sequence. You have to really drive the hands to create a lag. Lag and snap, like cracking a whip, like casting a fishing rod. He's driving the knob of the fishing rod or whip forward. And then when he reaches the end here, the lag will turn into a whip. Lag and snap. and It's got to be really explosive. So this was one of the good drills we did. But again, watch here. You're driving the hands forward, but not as explosively as you should. That lead arm has to stab and drive forward, and the top hand has to drive as well. That's why we call it the stab drill. The lead arm has to the lead tricep or left tricep for you has to extend out. And you have to really stab. Now, this is one of the best drills you did. It still wasn't perfect, but better. And you're still in a palm down, palm up position, X top position. You've taken that rollover out of your swing. Again, you watch Canel. 
His rotation and the rear hip drive is really driving the hands forward. They lead the swing, and then when the top hand drives past the bottom, and you snap, you go ahead and you have a good good snap. Look how far you're stabbing, and look how long and slow that is. It's got to be, you know, half that length. Look at how fast that is and in real-time motion. Look at yours, you're just dragging around. Watch this. You lead, your hands aren't driving forward to get out ahead of the body in the swing to create a lag, you're just dragging around and then you're you're snapping or pushing the top arm right there. The wrist roll over. Watch here. He's using that rotation to drive the hands forward. Stab forward. Stab, stab. Drive the hands and then the top hand will extend. Different guys have different focuses but watch right here. This is, should be a short quick stab drill like you're stabbing an ice pick into a sheet of ice. And look how drawn out that is. You know, if you think about him stabbing an ice pick on the end of the bat into a sheet ice, right there he stabs it and then it goes and, and snaps. Watch how passive that lead arm is. Watch how there's a there's not a burst there. There's not a stab. Look at here. You can see how quick that is. There's a stab. Frank Henry from above. And then he starts into the snap. Uh, look at right here. Look at the stab right there. And again, watch, watch here. There's no stab at all here. It's a real slow motion. And then it picks up speed at the end. Right there. That's where the only time it picks up some speed. So you got to develop a stab. The frisbee throw is good for developing an extension and a quick burst and stab. That's not bad. And look how great the hip rotation's improved. Absolutely beautiful. But and there's there's decent extension there. That's one of the drills you can use. And then you can use a stab drill. But look at here. You know the stab drill is supposed to create extension, and you know you can't do it. Watch Jeff Hall. Watch his his drive of the knob forward to create a stab. Watch Andrew Collins's. You rotation, and then there's a dr linear drive forward towards the bottom half of the ball right there. When you do this drill, watch your lead arm. It doesn't extend off your chest. It's a short, quick stab, but there's no extension. At the end, it comes off a little bit. Now watch the swing here. It just barn doors all the way around. That's why you're not able to hit live pitching well. Until you can master it off the tee, and until you can master the drills, it won't be any good. Right there. You've got to be shorter, quicker, and faster. And when you can do the slide tube with both hands. Now here at the end, the swing was vastly different. But watch the rear leg. The hips don't drive explosively. You just squish the bug. It's a baseball term. But you squish the bug. You are not getting the weight transfer and the drive. Now this drill here is very good. Look at there. You're getting a drive off the back hip into the front brace leg and you're rotating. Now watch the lead arm here. Is it getting extended off? No, it's just following around. So until you master that, until you master and learn that lag and step, and we have episodes on it, I'm going to give you one to drill when you get home, but again, on that slide, you've got to drive that hand, those hands ahead. Not just the lead arm stabbing, but the top arm driving as well. Create a lag, and then you get the resounding snap. This is a well-struck ball in a, in, a, in a much better looking swing, but again, you get a little bit of extension, but not much. Again, you're just kind of swinging around in a circle rather than creating a lag and snap. So there's a lot of work to be done. And uh, the T, the uh, you know, swing simulator, the slide tube are all going to work well for you. Uh, the concept of getting the hands down to the ball is good there. But your body does, watch how these guys, this is, uh, this is uh, Davis Pilladell, watch how his body's open already when he makes impact. He opens, drives the hands. Um, look at here, Jeff Roxby. Watch how... His body opens, look how far ahead he drives the hands to create the lag and snap. The only way he can hit the ball with the rope. And then when he goes back, very similar swing with the actual bat. Look how the hands are driven off front, and the snap comes after the body's already open. So, you've got the drills to work on. We'll keep working on by video. And again, it's a vast improvement, but if you leave the back foot is dragging there, it's, it's just spinning rather. You need to really get that, this drill right here. Get this first, get the lower body working properly, you're lowered and coiled up much, much better, fast improvement, and then work on an explosive stab. Both hands, you can use both hands on the slide tube, and when you get into a heavy bag or anything you can at home, drive the hands ahead and then snap. Really looking forward to continuing to work with you on this, Jason. At 48, you're a very fit guy, and I think the sky's the limit for how well you can uh, improve on the swing. Until you improve the lag and stab, though, and that drive of the hands to lead the swing, until you get to that point, you're not going to hit well outside, but the T will be a great tool for you. The GT is offering a 10% discount if you order direct online using the Swing Makeover code. It's a T we use for all our lessons and camps. And the Evil BP Balls, if you use Swing Makeover code, direct at evilsports.com. The Evil One, Bob Russell, he'll give you a 5% discount on those. Good luck and continue to work.